Good afternoon. My name is Angela Esquivel, and I'm here today to speak to you about my experience as a survivor of sexual assault and to describe the ways in which the Violence Against Women Act has played a direct role in saving my life. I was a college senior when I was drugged and sexually assaulted by a classmate of mine. Sexual violence was a topic that was familiar to me at the time of my assault, and as a resident advisor, I was aware of the resource that ex resources that existed both on and off campus. With the support of my friends, I took proactive steps to get help in the days following this horrific event. I reported the incident to campus and local law enforcement, went to the hospital to receive an invasive forensic medical examination, and entered into group and individual counseling in order to begin the process of healing. The law enforcement investigators handling my case told me to my face that they didn't think I'd been beaten badly enough for the district attorney to pick up my case, and they discouraged me from pursuing criminal charges. When my assailant began stalking me at my residence hall and leaving notes, gifts, and even flowers, I was granted a restraining order against him, but I was still the one who had to turn around and walk the other way whenever I saw him on campus. I pursued justice through the university judicial system, but by the time the investigation was finished, it was so close to graduation that administrators told me there was nothing that could be done. Although I had received excellent support from some university staff members and counselors that helped me move forward, the resistance and victim blaming that I faced made the recovery process even more challenging and complex. My assailant walked across the same stage I did on graduation day. I left California after graduation and fled to Ann Arbor, Michigan for graduate school. I thought that leaving the place where this happened would give me the fresh start that I so desperately wanted. I wanted to forget what happened to me. It was there that I quickly learned that having a crime like sexual assault committed against you is something that changes your life forever. I hadn't left this experience back in California as I'd hoped to. It was with me every waking moment of my life. I struggled with depression and continue to do so to this day. However, it was the Violence Against Women Act that gave me the outlet through which I would eventually come to channel the pain and anger I felt in order to leverage my experience for good and bring healing to others who have been subjected to all kinds of violence. In January of 2008, the University of Michigan Sexual Assault Prevention and Awareness Center began producing a short film entitled A Common Voice, Sexual and Intimate Partner Violence on Campus. This film, funded by a grant from the Department of Justice Office on Violence Against Women, aimed to spark a campus dialogue about the prevalence of sexual and intimate partner violence among underrepresented communities such as the ethnic and racial minority groups, people living with disabilities, and the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community, many of the same communities that are currently at risk of being denied the benefits in the Senate's most recent iteration of the Violence Against Women Act. I agreed to share my story as a survivor in the film, and once the film was complete, I spoke on several panels and participated in screenings of the film throughout campus. I never could have predicted the ways in which my involvement in that film would radically change my life. I switched graduate programs to pursue a career in student affairs so that I could better advocate for and support students of all backgrounds and experiences. When I moved to DC, I became a trained crisis counselor through the DC Rape Crisis Center, where I worked directly with survivors either on the hotline or in the hospital as they received the same examination that I had years prior. I have sought professional positions in my career that include crisis response and primary prevention work in order to work towards ending sexual violence on college campuses. Because of VAWA, I was able to go from someone surviving a crime in silence to someone who is empowered to use the experience as a catalyst for change. The film has continued to be used in professional staff trainings and student discussions across the University of Michigan, and even led the campus law enforcement to draft a 10-point promise to survivors of sexual and domestic violence. None of this would have been possible without the Violence Against Women Act. VAWA gave me my voice back, and that voice has grown strong enough that I am able to use it to help others find theirs and to stand before you today. I implore the House of Representatives to pass the inclusive bipartisan bill authored by Senators Leahy and Crapo. Reaching across the aisle to do so will not only provide critical, life-saving direct services to survivors in the aftermath of sexual or domestic violence, 
but it will also enable colleges and universities across the country to ramp up vital primary prevention efforts so that students can pursue higher education without having an educational experience that is marred by violence. Failing to pass an inclusive VAWA would cost millions of people the chance to seek healing, and it would cost too many lives. A person's immigration status, gender or sexual identity, or tribal affiliation should not rob them of the opportunity to get help and begin the lifelong process of rec reclaiming their lives in the aftermath of domestic or sexual violence. Every man and woman in this country deserves that chance, and reauthorizing a strong Violence Against Women Act is the most clear and tangible way to provide them that chance. Thank you.